somewhere. Great. Grandma, are you on? Yep, I'm here. Mm -hmm. um, just want to make sure that we're live and ready and we've got our participants here. Welcome. I see them coming on where they're, they, you're, they sort of add in one at a time. So um, we're really excited this, this evening to be in conversation with uh, Ken Falk and Bill Price. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Adobe. Welcome, everyone. I'm just going to keep welcoming you for a little bit. I know we have we had hundreds of people, uh, participants, who wanted to hear this conversation, which is really exciting. So I'm going to make sure we give them a couple minutes to join, um, and then we'll get started on um, talking about the beautiful Adobe, which is uh, a favorite spot for people in Sonoma, and of course, uh, the magic of Ken Folk. <laughs> Uh, looks like we're 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 still kind of building. We've got 65, 67. It's kind of funny how Zoom works. You guys are all coming in right now. Here, 33, 45, Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 500, 500. <laughs> Yum. Yes. For those of you who are joining us, make sure you open a beautiful bottle of rosé if you have it, or um, any three sticks will do for sure. <laughs> That's right. It's a very warm day here in, in uh, Sonoma, and I think it's pretty warm in San Francisco, too, it Ken. It's warm and sunny, but in typical San Francisco fashion, the fog is rolling in, um, adding a um, little mystery to our afternoon. So I know you do some work in Provence, and you spend some time in Provincetown. When I you do. take this bright, summery, fruitful rosé, where do you go to? Are you on the beach in P-Town? You... I'm definitely on the beach in P-Town. We drink a fair share of rosé in Provence, which is pink water there. But, um, you know, summertime in Provincetown, on our dock there, um, I have several bottles of this coveted rosé uh, stashed away. And, um, that to me signifies it, and I go there in my head. Although I, I must say, we also enjoy it up in the heat of Napa, up at the ranch. It's quite perfect there too. So I don't think there's a bad place to drink it, frankly. <laughs> no, agree. Um, well, good. I think we've uh, given a couple minutes for folks to join, so welcome. And I just want to uh, let you know a little bit about how the Zoom conversation will go. We're really excited to be taking your questions. Um, both Bill and Ken are available to answer those questions. So you can send them through the Q&A or the chat. We'll be monitoring both. And I'm gonna operate, my name is Prema Bian, and I'm gonna operate a little bit as the moderator for these guys. And, um, and we're really excited to, to, to have the conversation today. So um, let's, go, let's get started. Yep. Great. So, let's start at the beginning. So. Brema is one of the co-founders of Three Sticks Winery and more famously, the founder of the Adobe. So Prem, <laughs> take us back to that day many years ago when, uh, when you stumbled into the Adobe and, and, and how did you find it and what did you think? Oh my gosh, I still remember that day and I get goosebumps because the minute I walked in the front door of this property, I couldn't believe it existed, number one. And I couldn't believe it had always been in Sonoma and we didn't know about it. Um, and it just, it fit every single uh, part of what we were trying to create for Three Sticks. So, you know, we had been operating our offices out of a really sweet little house in Sonoma with a nice backyard and, and people were starting to come and taste and, um, I had a conversation with you about, you know, I think it's time for us to really have to have hospitality, to be able to welcome people and pour wine for them. We were, you know, we had grown um, organically for a number of years, and we're it at took, that point. It took so long to warm up to that idea. I was like, people <laughs> drinking wine with us? Exactly. That's crazy. <laughs> well, and Bill, you said to me, which I love, you said okay, well, then it needs to be historic. If I'm, if I'm gonna put my resources into something, I want it to be historic. I want us to really preserve something that deserves it. And I, I wanted to have that same spirit of a home that we're sitting sort of, you know, you have your, your Hawaiian background that, that we have the feeling of Ohana with the people that we meet with at Free Sticks, where we get that same 
piece, like the intimacy of a conversation while we pour wine and not just a bar and you're sidling up and you're sort of in a, in a lineup of people. So, you know, it was those things. And there's not a lot of historic homes at any time, you know, out on the market. So um, it was a long, arduous process to really find something that would work for us. And walking into the adobe here in, and meeting the Demlers, who were the owners of the property, a beautiful couple in Sonoma who had loved and cherished this property for many years before us and who had purchased it from Harriet Jones, who really saved, saved the um, adobe from oblivion. So it's just this really cool line of, um, of owners who feel the sense of responsibility and stewardship to make sure that this um, that this beautiful place live you know into eternity. So great. So let's bring up the shot of the adobe, and then we can walk through Ken's first. So so from the outside, the adobe was not so spectacular. I don't know <laughs> what told me that they walked by it a hundred times and never knew it was there. Totally. Uh, but like like the uh, like the girl next door that that blossoms into the. Uh, movie star uh the adobe came along over time so kid i called you up said hey come on you got to go look at this 1842 building uh what were your thoughts when you first first got there um you know it i love as as you know um i love historic structures i live in historic houses um you know in san francisco i live in a mid-century house and in provincetown we live in a 19th century house and um, so I've always been attracted to them um, and you know I was a sense of excitement someone that someone wanted to do something out of the box something not you know uh, not that we don't love all of our winemaking cousins and friends um, but you know there's a certain sense and, and Prima touched on it that you know it's sort of a, a hospitality where this felt very much like a personal thing, um, going into a residence, going into a historical residence, seeing something that old. I mean, it was sort of like um, uh, designer pornography <laughs> to get to go in and like a uh, wonderful old structure that I'm like, there's an 1840s Adobe like available to buy and still standing. And, you know, California is not that old. Like how, how is this possible? <laughs> So I was excited and intrigued and, um, you know, and it, it obviously was the beginning of something really special. Cool. Well, so as I remember when we started talking about this, about the only instruction I gave you as you were developing, I think you always talk about a story to a project you're working on or vernacular you're reaching for. The only thing I think I told you was I don't want it to feel like a museum. I didn't yeah. want to feel like, you know, cobwebs behind the wooden bench. Uh, so tell me a little bit about what, how you developed the story and the, the thought behind the Adobe. Every, every job we do, um, we really do tell a story. I, I often refer to them as, as movies. And so we begin with the narrative. We literally write words about what we're trying to do. And this, this wasn't just about an extraordinary historic structure. Um, it was about you and Eva and about Three Sticks and Prima and um, a conversation that we wanted to have with people we were going to welcome. And so we look at all of those things and, you know, how do you layer that in to create a space that it not only honors its history, but brings it forward. And um, creates uh, something that transports people, that doesn't feel stuck in amber, yet isn't, you know, irreverent or inappropriate. And so um, that's where we began. And we really, you know, tried to, I often say we, we want to learn to speak the same language as our, our clients and, um, and develop the language that would become the Adobe that feels, you know, when you walk through that door, it's a sense of, discovery you know there's like a childlike sense of wonder to these spaces where um you you obviously are in sonoma you're obviously in something that's historic yet it's unlike any place that i had ever experienced and um 
there's, there's a sense of awe about it all. Um, and uh, I think that's not unlike, you know, how you discover wines and experience in them and the relationships that get built around them. So um, that's where we began. And, you know, you obviously and Prema were amazing partners who supported us through all of this. And obviously we've more importantly developed a real deep friendship out of this that is the biggest gift that has kept giving. You know, I, I'm, all of my clients are not friends, but, oh, sorry, all of my friends are not clients, but all of my <laughs> are friends, I got it backwards. And uh, that is so true with, with you guys. And um, so that became like a way to express this. It's sort of a, a love letter to, to you guys and to, to uh, the history of the building, so. That's how we I start. Love that. One of one of the things that people say, Ken, when they come in here, media people, you know, people who are discovering it for the first time, they say that it feels very alive. Like there's an alchemy, a real magic to the property, and I completely agree. And it, I think that the essence of that was here before, yes. before any of us were here. But that what you did was you really. Um, you emphasized it. You were able to bring that out in a way that you can viscerally feel it when you walk on the property. It, it feels alive. The history feels alive. And so it's not something that is necessarily in the past. You're transported into something right now that's alive right now. Cool. <laughs> well, let's put up some of the photos for people who haven't been <laughs> enough to visit us here. This is the room I'm sitting in right now. Uh, I'll just point out one of my favorite features of it which is that bookshelf over the little um, uh, console table, which has fragments from a dig they did here. And it's all kinds of little knickknacks from the time uh, that the adobe was built. So I'm gonna grab a couple. Um, it's surreal, it's like you're in the image, Bill. <laughs> it's to break anything. Little, little porcelain figures. Um, uh, and you know old horseshoes, uh, but I loved I loved what that brought to the adobe. And um, as you keep going around that room, I think everybody loves the gold the gold mirror up back one. <laughs> they love the gold tortoise shells too. Yeah, but yeah. Well, they love. The, I, I got to ask you about the tortoise shells one more time. I've forgotten what the answer to the tortoise shells was. But the gold mirror is always a highlight. So yeah, let's go over to the tortoise shells. People always want to know how many tortoises were killed in the construction. None. Of the none. They're fiberglass. <laughs> none. They shed okay. their shells, Bill. So um, here's here's where we're going to steal your secrets, Ken. How do you stand in an 1842 building and say gold-coated plastic tortoise shells? <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't say that? And the mirror. <laughs> like a crown. I mean, I think really we were sort of trying to channel um, lots of different inspirations, certainly taking it from um, Mexico and the kind of rich traditions that got bought to uh, California and that continue on, you know, this wonderful community that is so vibrant and wanting to play with some of that, that feeling. And so the tooled leathers, the gold mirror that almost feels like Aztecian and like a crown. And um, even the tortoise shells adding, it wanted to feel like a great collection. It needed to feel deeply personal. And while it wasn't me living there or you living there, it needed to feel like someone had inhabited the space. You know, the places that impact us the most, the ones that we carry around with us are opinionated and interesting and peculiar and quirky and we wanted the space to have that layered look it wasn't stuck in time um it felt collected and touched by hand and um had a real point of view um and so we we really played with all of those little inspirational pieces and pieces of history and and places and so i'm seeing the terracotta floors that were there, which were a wonderful thing, the handmade terracotta floors, which <laughs> but it felt like it should. What are you showing off now? The stamped leather. Yeah, uh, I just love how you use materials that were real to the period, um, like the stamped leather, leather, 
a cowhide, and then I'm going to go over and show the iron um, fireplace. And we really, I really must give a shout out because of that I love, that, that work there. Um, you know, this was such a team effort, um, as Bill and Prima well know. Um, Daryl Serrett, who is a, a long senior designer, who is one of the, the great design talents uh, out there, and I've had the privilege to work with, uh, who helped lead this project with me. Um, and that metal work is by uh, um, a team Mary. woman named Mary, who we just uh, can't get enough of. We can't, we, I don't want to share her name because it's like a, a, a <laughs> state secret. But uh, you know, it was a real joy. Her name is Jane. <laughs> yeah, her name is Jane. She does perfect California. Um, the one thing that we haven't mentioned is, I mean, it, it really was a journey. And I think looking behind Bill at the, the artifacts, you know, this wasn't an easy thing. Many people would have given up along the way. And it is a testament to Bill Price and his sort of, you know, commitment to spend the time, to spend the ridiculous money to, to do this, because it would have been far easier to go and open a perfectly lovely, beautiful tasting room somewhere else. And, you know, anytime you restore a historic structure, one, it, you don't know what you're getting into, but also just the complications, doing it in a small town and, you know, the perseverance that Prima had, but, but Bill uh, and the willingness to, to, to go there and to uh, the, the belief oh, in us. Yeah, the, the, the vision and the belief, exactly. The commitment. Yeah. It's a real commitment that um, it was a privilege to do that in a rare combination of someone who let us loose and believed mm -hmm. in it, but also, you know, believed in it enough to support it through a very crooked path and not give up on it and not compromise and, and not cut the corners. Um, and that's just was, you know, a treat for us. Uh, and so, thank I you. Do have, I do have a couple of questions coming in. Um, Deborah Del Favo wants to know if the tile floor was original. And you touched on the tile floor. Um, the, that tile floor was not original, but there was a tile floor. There was, there was uh, um, I think over the course of time, there were some alterations made to the d Adobe and Obviously, we've, we've honored the stewards who really did take care of this building, but there were also some things that weren't so great and so authentic. And I think the things that felt like they were part of the architecture, we mm -hmm. really wanted to, to have them feel like they um, were part of it and really were the quality that it kind of deserved. And so we have these beautiful handmade terracotta tile um, that I felt would, would have been what should have been in the adobe, but wasn't. Yeah. Um, well, thank Bill, Pres Bill Prezant, sorry, Bill, but your friend Bill Prezant asks if it was difficult to get approval for the renovation. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, that all depends on what you consider difficult. I will say, at my seventh appearance before the Sonoma City Council, when they decided after a year and a half that we should write a history of the building before they issued our building permit, I said, that is a terrific idea. It would have been really terrific if you thought of it a year and a half ago, right. uh, instead of holding up our project for another couple months. But um, the real deal is it was very difficult because they didn't, no one had renovated an Adobe in a very long time and they didn't really know how to do it. They didn't know what to require. They'd tell us things like hook the walls to the, to the uh, foundation We'd say, well, there is no foundation in an adobe building. It was built on top of the ground. Um, and so it was, a, it was a real struggle. And frankly, you know, I don't know if I'd known beforehand how difficult it was going to be if I really would have taken it on. But once, once you're committed and also once I started to see the vision for it, once you hung out in the space and saw how special it was, um, it, there was, there was no doubt. Hey, one thing I want to talk about, Kim, is the color. We spent so much time picking the color of, of the walls here, which are. Oxblood mixed plaster, and we were trying to figure out what we should do. Um, 
how did how did you finally figure out what we should do? I know I know Eva and you had some secret meetings that you didn't allow me. We did have secret meetings. You know, it was like a it truly was a secret sauce. You know, we did want to feel like there was sort of blood mixed into the plaster and, and what did that mean and how did it become too too dark, too sort of yellow, too red, too peach, too um, you know, but it wanted to feel like the earth. It wanted to reflect, you know, you wanted to see the imperfection, see the hand. And this was a big decision because it really felt like it was impacting the fabric of this, you know, ancient building. And so um, it was trial and error. You know, you literally had to put it up and we looked at it in different rooms and different lights and 18 different versions. Uh, to to have come up with something and i mean i really have to say i think we nailed it especially when you're in the space it glows in the sunshine and feels radiant and then at night it it's twinkles and sort of candlelight and it really evolves throughout the day and it is so sort of flattering and um it takes a structure that i think could almost feel oppressive you know there's these super thick walls and, you know, dark beams. And, and instead, I, I really feel like it embraces you and glows from within. Yeah. So I, I yeah think we have a question here from Ann Ernst about what is still original, just to sort of uh, come along with what you're saying, Ken. And, you know, all the walls, we didn't move any of the walls. We didn't move any of the windows. The doors are all original. The, um, the, the, those incredible beams that you see above, that, that's the same roof that's always been over the adobe since the 1840s. Those are co continual redwood beams. The kitchen is another piece that was, you know, yeah. the first Go to the first kitchen. Great kitchen. Yeah. Inspirational kitchen. Yeah. So as much as you know, the adobe back in the day was built, you'd never have a kitchen inside the house because the fire danger was too great. So you always had a lean-to kitchen which is what this is, attached to the wall of the adobe, originally open, and then at some point they closed it up. And we loved it. It was teeny, uh, but, but just like a little matchbox. But paint in there was also a, a very uh, interesting process. So how, how did we end up with the sort of paint-flecked, ex exposed wood there, Ken? It oh. was yellow, remember. It was like canary <laughs> yellow. It was, it was sweet yellow and felt a little like precious and you know I wanted to know I wanted to see some of the guts of this thing and I wanted to 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 strip it back and get a sense that it had this shed like quality to it um and celebrate that not sort of hide it and pretend it was a cute cottage kitchen I'm like no it should feel rustic and um that was really the, the big decision. We didn't blow it out. We didn't put in a real fancy kitchen. Uh, we, we frankly kept a lot of what was there. Um, you know, adding the, the red onto the cabinets um, was a decision to, to add that little pop of color to give it a little bit of opinion against the rusticated wood. Um, I believe we, with the one countertops, we literally sanded the wood and- yep. Those um, had been there from Harriet's time. Those are like a shipboard that she right. that she had. Even though we spent all this money on lots of things, we really sort of grew where we were planted, to use a southern term, uh, in that kitchen and let it be honest. And um, it's very charming in person. Um, I mean, the photographs make it look a little funny, I think, the way it slopes down. But it's it's quite uh quaint and i love that it feels a bit like an you know an outhouse you know it's sort of it is in addition to the adobe it's you know it it has a a western almost uh well i i i loved standing there with you when you started picking with your fingernail on the yellow <laughs> paint and then we got to a, a weird green pea color and then we got to a red i think and a brown Maybe a white. Lead, there, lead paint poisoning. Lead. Uh, there, yeah. the, there were there were at least seven colors, at least seven colors that you peeled through to get to the wood. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Well, let, um, let, I just let, want to note to you guys that we have some. We have family members of the Joneses and the Demlers, and we have. 
people who are on this call sharing with us that are part of the history of the building, which is just really an honor. So thank you for joining us yeah, uh, this evening. Really great. The yeah. only reason we can have what we have today is because of the preservation that those families did over many, many, many years. Yeah. Um, I'm switching to the Pinot now and let's go to the <laughs> door. Wow. So this is the Cuvée Eva Marie Pinot. Uh, this is a wine. Oh, uh, and we do have questions about, we'll have to go back to those slides um, about the, um, we've had questions about Raphael and, and uh, oh, the mural. Okay. Go to the mural, go to the mural. Yeah. I, I, jumped, I jumped ship here. You got to talk well, to the yeah. You can talk about the mural. Um, so uh, just a real quick story. Um, several years ago, um, uh, several years ago, I um, came into my studio and a young man was on a ladder painting this glorious scene, two stories high in my studio. And I, I said, who is that young man? I thought I'd seen him around. And he had uh, just taken a job I was told somewhere else and today was gonna to be his last day working with us. And I'm like, what? Uh, and so we, we hired him sort of on the spot to um, become an artist in residence with us at Ken Falk Inc. And to paint every day. And- um, Wasn't he a teenager or something? He was so he young. He literally was very young. I, I mean, I, I, he was going to go work for Mitchell's ice cream. Uh, and I'm like, he can't go scoop ice cream. This young man is enormously talented. And so um, I can't take, you know, all the credit goes to him because all of the talent came from him. And, and um, this was one of the most important commissions he undertook. He has flown around the world to do this work now. Uh, and he has launched his own company where we greatly support, but we developed the idea that we really wanted a mural you know, California has a, a long history of historic murals. We wanted there to be a real artisan touch to uh, the adobe. We also had this big blank wall. We had created this uh, great courtyard and a, a really beautiful garden entrance. And we wanted the, the um, mural to not be so literal, but to, to reference the history of the adobe, the history of this place, the history of Sonoma uh, and of California. And so we came up with these various elements that all said bits of different, you know, pieces of that story. And Raphael created this composition. You can see that we had an image earlier of his sketches. And, you know, he came and took from that little sketch of his, you know, he came and uh, you see his, his I think that's a ladder where he sketched <laughs> out the grid and then drew it. Uh, but he is an extraordinary singular talent who has gone on to do magnificent things with us and now has his own business and is, is doing work uh, really all over and we keep him as busy as we can. I can't say enough. And I think it is one of the defining things about the Adobe and you know, the art, not of only making wine, but the, uh, the art of this place and how it is physically tied to, to the buildings. Yeah, he, he did, so, there's, there's a, the front room too. So people, yeah. I don't think we have a picture of it, but you'll, we'll have to come yeah. and see it for the work that you, that you really need to see. So come visit. Yeah. Well, as soon as he did this, we said, okay, we got to have him do some other things. And we, I also have a mural of his in my home. Yeah, uh, well, it wasn't really a wall that was supposed to be a mural, but you know, it had to be a mural. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Ken, we were originally scheduled at five thirty, but did I hear you have till five forty-five because there's a couple other things. Whatever you need, I'm all yours. Great, you're you're the best. Um, so let's talk for a minute about the store, uh, the storehouse. Uh, so we had a 1950s garage on the property that was falling down. Under California law, that's a historic building. I won't take the half an hour story to talk about how long it took us to convince them that we could tear down a 1950s falling apart garage <laughs> as part of a restoration project. But in his place, I had the idea that I wanted to build an Adobe building, and so a, a Adobe room. Uh, and uh, so we started to do that, and then we found out 
that of course it's no longer legal in the state of California to use Adobe as a building material because it's made on site and you can't stress test it. Well, brilliantly, uh, our team came up with a concept which was cinder blocks up the middle and Adobe bricks on both sides. So this is even thicker than the usual Adobe, <laughs> Adobe room. It's got uh, Adobe brick, cinder block, Adobe brick. And uh, Ken, talk a little bit about uh, taking on the challenge of the, the only new Adobe building built in California we're aware of. Um, I mean, it, 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 I would have to say, is my favorite space in the property. It, you know, it has a, a, a barn-like, almost cathedral um, uh, feeling when you, when you walk into it with the exposed rafters and the vaulted ceiling. Um, you see the adobe bricks, and so it sort of feels and smells like that. Um, you know, not unlike the kitchen where we peeled it back, this feels like the skin of the building is exposed, where inside the actual adobe, it's, you know, it's covered over, and so you don't get to see the sort of guts of what makes that building. Um, and, you know, then we've, we certainly added a, a touch of modernity with this interesting sculptural light fixture. Um, one of the great things is the genius-ness uh, and the uh, wonder of the door to the mm -hmm. Adobe, which is a door within a door if you go. So what happens there are there are these giant Adobe doors that close. You don't really get a sense of scale. And then inside of them are another pair of doors, man doors, that open so that you didn't have to open these enormous doors every time. But um, they're just so beautifully made. And, you know, it is certainly the spot for many of a memorable dinner. If you haven't had the pleasure of coming and having dinner there, um, it is one of the great spaces uh, to do that and to get lost in those gardens. Uh, it is very, very special. And to be surrounded by what certainly feels uh, like a historic, unique space, the wine, the light, it's, uh, it's uh, very special. Well, I think that's a great pivot point, Ken, for us to talk about where you are seated right now. Um, well, speaking first, of, first speaking, we, of, uh, speaking uh, of cathedrals, first, historic cathedrals. Let's yeah. talk about first, wine. First, we need to talk about the Cuvée Eva Marie. Oh, yes, of course, absolutely. <laughs> You, you, you do run a wine company. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> now this is my favorite wine. This is the wine I grabbed like during the fires in 2017 out of my whole house. I took a toothbrush, my kids, the pets, and this wine. <laughs> well, uh, Bob Cabral, our, our uh, uh, winemaker who helped put together this blend with Ryan Pritchard and I, uh, we've all made a lot of wine in our lives, but I think I can all confidently say this is the uh, Pinot we were most nervous about. It's a barrel selection of our very best, best grapes. And we worked on it for about four months before we presented it to my wife, Eva, because her name was going to go on it. <laughs> and we slid the glass across the table. And as Ken knows, Eva is both has great taste, is very particular, and is not afraid to express her opinion. So all three of us sat terrified on the opposite side of the table that she wasn't going to like it, and that our, our vision of our flagship $100 bottle of Pinot was going to, to be rejected by the, the namesake. Fortunately, she loved it, and we've all, we've all moved forward. Wow. She's so, so delightful, too. Yeah. I hope everybody uh, gets a chance to try the Cuvée Eva Marie. I always say, if you're looking at a wine list and you can't figure out anything on the wine list to buy, buy a wine that's named after the owner's wife or daughter, because... <laughs> <laughs> Guarantee it. That's going to be a good wine. <laughs> that's fantastic. I hadn't heard that. I like that. All right. Let's go to St. Joe's. Your love for historic buildings. You took on an incredible project. Um, oh, I my wish God. I, look at it. I wow. wish I had I wish I had a before photo. When uh, I'm going to get a little off color here, but when Kim first took me to this, this church, which I think had been abandoned since the... 89 earthquake or condemned since the 89 earthquake um, and we walked through and he described what he was going to do I said you sir have enormous balls <laughs> because 
little... I knew what it took me to do the little Adobe, and here he is operating on this ginormous, uh, you know, church, which has been home to rats and God knows what over the last 40 years. It is, yeah. It is, uh, it is a magnificent space. I must say, um, I think I, I, I don't know, maybe I had too much of the Eva Marie when I decided to, to, to do it. It is a uh, historic structure uh, from 1913, not nearly as old as the adobe. There was a church here prior. When it was built, it was the largest Catholic church west of the Mississippi. Um, a, uh, as I said, National Historic Landmark damaged in the 89 earthquake. And uh, I saw it about four and a half years ago, uh, filled with pigeons, raining inside. Um, and the pigeons uh, were the best of the neighborhood. <laughs> they, the pigeons were the best of the neighborhood. And I said, I, I think I'm supposed to buy a church. And so we set about restoring it and uh, wanted to create a new community for the for the church, not a new religion, so to speak, one based on uh, art and beauty, thinking um, that we would create uh, this community and celebrate, I think, what makes us human, the best of who we are, celebrate food, wine, art. Um, and it's been a, a magnificent journey. And uh, certainly over the past several months, it's even instead of contracted, it's expanded. What became sort of um, really about a magnificent building um, became a, a community that grew beyond that. Our, our, I'm getting religious. Our, con our congregation <laughs> grew and um, it's been wonderful. We now have a great digital presence and virtual following for all the things that happen here in the church. We've had wonderful programming continue yeah. Um, and it's, uh, I invite everyone to certainly please come visit us at the Adobe, but you're also invited to come and visit St. Joseph's. It, if you need something to lift your spirits up, this is the place we are, we are open again. Um, we have wonderful retail here also and wonderful partnerships with amazing uh, artists and artisans. So uh, I would certainly invite you to to come see us. And, and how do they find out when they can come and what's going on? At the Adobe, obviously, they call Three Sticks or go on the Three Sticks website. What do they do if they want to show up at St. Joe's and check out those bears over your I'll Actually, website? answer all my messages so you can <laughs> you can contact me directly. Uh, at, my email is easy. I'll tell everybody online here, ken at kenfolk.com. Um, or uh, you can email Sarah at St. Joseph's Arts Society, so there's two S's in there, dot com. Uh, and we'll have you for a wonderful tour and a visit and pour you a glass of delicious three sticks. Uh, Bill has been a, a great supporter, he and Eva, uh, and three sticks has as well, and have really been part of this community and believe in it, and so that I'm, I'm grateful for as well. And you can also follow us. We have a, a new digital presence. It's already gotten a nice community, um, St. Joseph's Art Society on Instagram. So you can find us there too. So fantastic. Cool. Yeah, it's really, really special. And the sound quality, if, if you're ever putting on another music performance there, um, oh my gosh, uh, the acoustics when the uh, band or the singers are, are on that, uh, I don't know what you call where the altar was before, but uh, this. I'll duck, yeah. it's right back there. I'm in the corner, mm -hmm. by the way. All right, uh, it's spectacular, it's spectacular. Thank you, it's such a gift to the community that you did that. And um, I'm not sure what was more courageous, either uh, taking on renovating that church or just giving out your personal email over. Uh, all right, that's okay, <laughs> I don't mind. It'll all go to spam anyway, don't worry. <laughs> Um, well, there, there was also some huge news this week, Ken, about a project that you're taking on. And I know we've got, we probably have five, ten minutes left. And I just don't want to be remiss that you're going to be, can you tell us about the Chrysler building? I know, right? Is that not crazy? Yes. Um, you know, as I said in a church, I often say, uh, God made a job for me. And, you know, when I meet someone like Bill and Eva and Prima, who, you know, have their courage and, and let me come in and do what I do. I'm just so grateful. And 
Um, although someone once, uh, you know, said to me when you were a little kid, I grew up in Podunk, Virginia, that, you know, and I always had illusions of grandeur. And they were like, did you ever think you would do these sorts of things? And I'm like, yes, that's all I ever thought I would do. <laughs> uh, and so I got a phone call from a gentleman who said, I just bought the Chrysler building and you're the only guy I could think to call. And I was like, I didn't think you knew my name. How did, and so, um, you know, what a joy. We are recreating, we're, we're sort of helping on multiple things there at the Chrysler building, but we're recreating the historic Cloud Club, which was uh, put there when the, when the building opened as sort of an amenity and a special posh thing for, for the uh, tenants there of the, of the Chrysler building. And uh, what an honor, you know, it's incredible. I, much like the Adobe, I joked earlier with Bill, like that, you know, it's like, don't screw it up. Like these are precious <laughs> things that you could, you could, you could mess this up. And, and so, um, you know, but you also don't want to be afraid. And so with a fearless attitude, we're heading into it. Uh, we have some extraordinary, uh, exciting things. And frankly, it's the same mantra that we, we bought to the Adobe that we bought to St. Joseph's and that's to, to honor its past and its legacy, but not to leave it sort of setting in the past to bring it forward and to meet and exceed expectations. You can really, at the, at the level it is, you can go out and you're on the same level as the Eagles that are the corners mm. of the Chrysler building. It's heart stopping. Mm. Uh, so what, what a privilege and how lucky am I and you know, I am the most grateful man on the planet for my charmed existence and life to be filled with beautiful friends, beautiful wine. Um, and I'm assuming a lot of people uh, with us know Bill Price, but if you don't, he is a gem of a human being and uh, we could all be more like Bill. So Amen. here's to you, Bill, for making great wine and being a good human and to you, Prima. Oh, thank you. you too. Well, that, <laughs> you mentioned Prima, I can drink too. <laughs> That's terrific. And Ken, it's, it's so much fun uh, working with you and traveling with you. Just seeing what you see through your eyes uh, is always uh, just such an inspiration. So a couple, couple quick things before we wrap up. Number one, where do you see yourself with this Pinot? Are you at your club in you know, the Battery or London? Um, no, I think I'm, I think that I'm around a table, um, with great friends. You're there, hopefully, um, both of you. And, um, I don't know, the candles are getting low. I'm probably like talking too much. I might get teary <laughs> at the story, um, really good food. Um, and you know, those, those little those little moments that's the mantra of saint joseph's is that every moment matters and if the past three four months have taught us anything it's like how much those moments matter and um i have said uh that you know for me it's been having and i know it's not like this for everyone but for me it's been like you know a few months of sundays where mm -hmm. I get to hike with my dogs and I, I get to cook dinner and drink beautiful wine. And so, um, you know, to, to me, that's what this creating something like this is about. Um, and it allows us to connect over that and the simple pleasures in life. Um, and this is truly one of them. And, you know, thanks for making damn good wine. <laughs> and Eva just sent you a little hello, Ken, with lots of hearts. So she's, uh, <laughs> she's my wife, but your girlfriend. <laughs> That's going to be the funny part of this when I run away from Bill Price's wife. <laughs> it's happening. He just well, Ken, thank you so much for taking out uh, from your time now. And uh, everything you do is magical. He has a book called uh, Ken Fulps. Magical and world. We have a new book coming up, and not till next year. So. That, but it's got all kinds of magical ideas, and uh, I'd say you never have a boring day when you're in Ken Folk's world. So thank you very much, Ken. Thank okay. you, guys. Thank you, Prema. Cheers. Great Cheers. to see you, Ken. Thanks for joining us. Oh my gosh, a privilege. <laughs> Take care of yourself. I know. Bye.
I forgot how daggone good this would be. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.